Hello everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is your Sacred Crone story time. And we have been <clears throat> reading from Jean Shinola Boland's book, Crones Don't Wine. And I am so super excited. I came across a masterclass of hers last week and it was live and I watched it and I booked in for her seven week program. I can't believe it. It's just so, it's just absolutely fabulous. I cannot believe I'm having this opportunity to uh, tap in to her program. And it's not absolutely insane, crazy Northern Hemisphere time for Australians either. So I'm really excited. And her seven week program is all about tapping into the goddess within, not just the crone, though um, I'm really looking forward to her week where she actually unpacks what I've informally been discovering myself, that in trying to find representations of the crone, the inner wise woman, through, at least through Western uh, European Anglo um, historical cultural um, records and that it's actually really hard um, and then forget Disney Disney's idea of an old woman uh, you know the the old witch is always the wicked witch um, and that's that's springing from the, the the Western medieval time where which is actually also so I mean Christianity completely just wiped out any notion of the wise woman um, along with its um, imperialism and colonialism and all that stuff but even when you go back to the ancient Greek the ancient ancient Romans the ancient Greeks they too uh, in their archetypes and stories of the gods and, and all that kind of thing um, the male gods are actually speak like the, what they've attributed to the male gods have actually been pre-Greek the the real classical the pre-Greek um, pantheon uh, there are wise women there's about six of them our mature wise women Hecate being one of them um, Sophia being another and she goes through talking about these six pre-classical women who were just absolutely phenomenal um, in the records and the discussion of the archetypes of energy and, and all the rest of it. Uh, and that though those female characters were then taken up and subsumed within the Greek. Hey, who's watching? Please put a comment so I know who you are. I'm doing this from the phone. So I want to see comments. Um, let me know who's watching. We are tuning in for Sacred Crane Storytime and I'm just saying that I am so excited. I got an opportunity to uh, drop in and do a seven week program with the author of the book that we're reading together, um, looking at the goddesses within. So she, what I love about Jean um, Shinola Bolan is um, the fact that she has been doing this for decades. Um, she looks at the representation of women throughout history archetypes. So she's a Jungian analyst. She looks at the stories of women through the archetypes of the major, major cultural stories of women uh, and how that we carry those common stories, even if we're not conscious of them, they shape the societies we're in. We carry them with us uh, and often we're not aware of where we're getting our influences from and she takes a look at these through a feminist lens I absolutely love her for that and one of the <clears throat> feminist lens is pointing out the, the misogyny and the patriarchy going way back to the ancient Greeks and the Romans and of course then Christianity took that mantle on and, and it's feeding us into our society today where we completely have annihilated the notion of an older woman um, 
she's now beginning the older woman is now beginning to maybe get a little bit more visibility again because we live in a consumer culture consumer capitalist society and well everyone's got to be a wage slave but so a woman can be older uh, now a little bit more so than before a little less visible than maybe 30 years ago but still there are restrictions on that she can be older but she needs to she's only legitimate if she still sort of looks or keeps herself young or all that sort of stuff but what Jean is, um, is going to be pointing out in her program that I can't wait to get to that chapter on uh, on on the whole story of the wise woman and the older woman uh, and the healer and the shaman and all that is that even going back to the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans their male archetypes in their pantheon in their cultural expression of you know identity and all the rest of it um, were actually subsumed these six pre-classical um, wise women and so I'm looking really really forward to being able to tap into that and then of course as one does is not um, not parrot back what others are saying but for me to subsume what I'm learning and then flip it back at you and that's what we've been doing together with this sacred crone story time yes I'm reading you her story the, the the book that she's written and the talking about the archetypes of the 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 wise woman that is within us and is the story uh, and the energetics that we can uh, tap into and bring with us into our third phase of womanhood it helps us to bring the sacred into the mundane it helps to counter the current story out there about menopause being either indicating of decrepit biological aging and or pathology in terms of hot flushes and and, and all the rest of it uh, no wonder a lot of women consciously and unconsciously get to start leading up to this phase and they're dreading it and they're fearing it uh, and then when they're in it all they're focused on is the biology of it the loss of youth of it all that sort of stuff and are being denied and are denying themselves the true power of this third phase of womanhood and so I'm hoping to add my voice to the voices that are out there and hopefully will continue growing to support women 40 and over to embrace this final phase of their womanhood and to finally let go of any of that story out there that just because our wombs are no longer going to be pushing out babies that it does not mean that we are energetically um, or even biologically dried up and barren and lacking juice we are not lacking juice at all even if you feel that your hormones are doing something and making your vagina dry does not mean that you're lacking juice and in fact the western medicalized society will focus on taking hormones I will throw in here that if you are living energetically in a juicy aligned unapologetic totally authentic way living in your joy then the body follows the body follows the energetics our body follows our thinking our body follows um, the the state of our emotions that's caused by our thinking so if we approach our changing body from our energetic non-physical form and we really jump into that and strengthen that and vibe from that then all the sort of aches and pains and hormonal changes and all this sort of stuff will actually take care of themselves and so I would dare to suggest that if you are living authentically unapologetically totally vibing in your energetic joy then anything like you know vaginal dryness will just take care of itself you'll even feel juicy in that way without having to medicalize it this is what I'm suggesting of course always seek medical help where, where it's needed there is nothing wrong with treating the body at the body level 
but the mind body spirit is completely connected and it it, it is um we've been approaching any bodily changes in our lives purely from the body level and our even our western psychology has removed itself in endeavoring to be empirically scientific like you know um and measurable like other sciences uh it has removed what hasn't been measurable or directly measurable at least i should say um and that's our, our sacred that's our spirit that's our mind that's the energetics that's what is connecting us to the the universe and when we are plugged into that side of our being then the physical vehicle that encases our spirit takes care of itself it comes along for the ride it's not fix the body and the soul will sort itself out it's the other way around anyway so let us continue with our reading of the next chapter and of course i made it go away how did i make that go away uh, ba -ba -ba. okay so whoever's popping in live please say hello please drop a comment do the lovey heart thingies i want to get engagement in this group so that everyone in the group then sees more posts uh, i am just i'm loving doing this story time with you in here and giving you a taste of what story time looks like i am I am so excited because I am putting out a cackling crone collective what I'm wanting and it's a membership group now the first 26 women to sign up get to sign up at the at their at their lifetime of their membership if they obviously if they leave the membership and then come back in at a later date they'll pay the fee at that later date time but the first 26 because two plus six equals eight eight is my life num life path number eight everything comes to eight for me and i love it um so the first 26 women to sign up for the cackling crone monthly membership they get to sign up at 17 us dollars a month the regular price will be 97 us dollars a month and why 97 well again 70, 80, it all adds up to what i want it to add up to but also what you're going to get for your monthly membership with me in the cackling crones is we will continue doing story time in there okay when i so this will be the one and only story time in this in this group so if you have been loving the story time and the and, and the lessons the inside out three principles perspective of tapping into your inner crone wisdom so if you want more of that kind of thing then you'll have to pop into the membership the membership will also give a monthly live in zoom or and stream that live in zoom so you can meet in zoom live with me if you need to watch it in replay you can but what we're going to have is our monthly crone moon women's circle and that's the waning moon so that is the moon leading leading us into making intentions for the next cycle letting go of what was and getting ready for what will next be and i'm looking forward to doing a monthly circle a support circle uh, for that and that will be part of the membership also part of the membership will be that we will have guest speakers coming in i am looking at doing uh interactive collaborations with other energetic coaches so i'm really looking forward to that um i am looking forward to doing weekly joy lives so i'll jump in with with the with the lives on joyful living tips for women over 40 i will be having competitions i will be having um embodiment activities because i'm really getting totally excited about bringing it all together bringing the mind 
into the body, mind, body, spirit, but bringing it all together into the body and how I've been looking at movement, bringing movement into what we do, joyful movement in what we do. And so I am looking forward to running masterclasses and workshops and lives and pulling in other experts to come in and, and do workshops with us in that in that membership as well. Um, I'm thinking of Beth and her uh, beloved movement uh, workshop. So I'm, I'm sorting something out with her for that. Um, this is going to be so much. And of course, with the membership, you'll get discounts and um, special discounts and first time offers on, on uh, first look on offers and services. Um, I'm looking next year to start bringing in retreats as well. And that will be first offered to the membership. So look out for that. I'm going to put the link to the membership above here. So if you have been loving what I've been doing with this Sacred Crone Story Time and would like to continue doing Sacred Crone Story Time with new books and new lessons along the way, then join the membership with me. That being said, let us get on to chapter five, which is Crones Meditate in Their Fashion. So what Jean says. Long before the gurus came to America with mantras and meditation, women in training to be crones, as well as crones themselves, found time and ways to meditate. It may have been called washing the dishes and staring out the window, or folding laundry and thinking, or daydreaming, or doing nothing. It may have begun as a way of a quiet cup of coffee or tea before the household awoke with its hullabaloo of getting everyone out the door. It may have been what you did while taking a walk or even what you did in commuter traffic. It is a time when a thought could come to mind or something beautiful truly seen or a dream or a conversation remembered. It was like an open-ended Quaker kind of internal meeting in which silence invited thoughts, images, feelings to be brought into a space, a spacious place in your mind or heart, observed, wondered about or pondered over lightly. And that's really important. It's really important to understand that and, and how, how I even managed to do yoga and meditation and other forms of ritual prayer and contemplation and reflection. I managed to do it for 25, 26 years in an, in an effort to chase that meditative state. Our wisdom arises from that space, that meditative space. It does not get put into us through the methods of meditation or prayer or incantation or whatever ritual it is that you're calling on to use. It's the state we're aiming for, not the activity. And in, when we understand that our wisdom is already there, see a lot of people make the mistake that they get caught up in the method, believing the method is what is essential, that the creation of the wisdom comes from doing the method. No method is needed and the wisdom is already there. What these methods can be helpful in doing, whatever they are, whatever activity, so it can be formal and, and ritualistic and um, orthodox in some faith-based religious spiritual tradition or it can be just simply washing up at the sink or standing under the shower what we're aiming for is to to find that space within that is already there and listen to the wisdom and allow it to arise that's already there it's not getting caught up in i have to do it this way or that way and if i don't do it at 
certain time in a certain way, then I'm screwed. None of this is, is true. And so this is how we can really make use and benefit fully from any kind of uh, meditation or prayer or contemplation or ritual is when we understand what it's actually doing. And all it's really doing is giving us a moment to quieten all the story in our head to, to taste the space that's already there. But in the end, you realize that you can snap into that space without a tool. And that's what's really liberating to know. So now when I meditate, now when I do yoga, now when I do, um, I love tapping, um, brilliant stuff, tapping. I, so all the things that I do, I do them now, not because I think that if I do them, I will be okay. And if I don't do them, then I won't be okay. I now do them because my inner wisdom in that moment is guiding me to take a walk, to take a shower, to do some stretching, to reach for whatever wonderful um, energetic tool that is out there uh, at our disposal. And there's so many. So listen to your listen to the wisdom that's already in there to be guided towards the contemplative activity rather than thinking that you need to find the activity to make yourself okay that's that's a big lesson to learn from from that for me and that that's from the three principles perspectives that i work from but it also is sounding very much what jean is saying in her chapter so going on women who worry incessantly are not meditating and what is worry worry is bringing the story in your head in the present moment, being stuck in the story in your head thinking about the future worrying about the future making conclusions based on the past and bringing them into the present and in this present moment being stuck in your head worrying about what's going to happen your ego thinking kicking in to try and figure out solutions for what you perceive you lack and how you're going to go get it or avoid also we would big worries on the things we want to avoid so going over she said he said conversations absolutely he said Jen, and that, and that that was my realization that I was the, like the embodied realizations intellectually for decades. I knew that, you know, the story in my head was the problem. Um, but the actual embodied insight was only a few years ago, sitting on the lounge in, in my lovely apartment that I'm talking to you from sitting on my lounge, looking out the window behind me, not seeing life outside the window because I was too busy imagining the form, the mirage of, of my uh, ex-husband who was in Pakistan, who'd never come to this apartment, who's never been to Australia, who never saw anything here, yet I was having conversations with him in my head about the past, running them through my head, and it took having a butterfly flying past that window behind me to catch me and for me to realise that on that sunny afternoon I was completely in another world I was in the world in my head and the world outside me was going by and I was not appreciating what I was actually in because I was in the story in my head about a past that has gone about a past that uh, no answers will be found in and just playing the story in my head. So conversations of having the worst thoughts. This is not meditating. So anything, anything that has you in your head, ruminating, running through the past, worrying about the future, stories of self, labels of self, anything here in your head means that you are not in your wisdom. You are not in that space where your wisdom arises from. 
Meditation is not worry, nor is it preoccupation with past pain and resentments, nor is it making up to-do lists. Focus in such cases may be inward, but there is no open space for thoughts and connections. And I guess in this way, I want to <clears throat> clarify the inclinations and the guidance and, and, and the messaging that comes, rises up from within our, our, our heartful wisdom space. It's a knowing. And this is where early on we did read with her, there was a difference between gnosis which is the the wisdom knowing and uh, logos the rational ego intellectual thinking they are different they're, they're totally different beasts and the logos intellectual ego thinking does not have the answers for us and that is completely counter to what our mainstream society has been telling us for centuries now that everything needs to be rational, everything needs to be logical, everything needs to be abstract, theoretical, intellectual, empirical, measurable, and all that jazz for it to be legit. And I'm flipping the switch on that and saying anything coming out of your thinking is up here is, is supposition and assumption and not um, reality. So where are we going? Focus is it may be inward, but blah, blah, blah. Uh, so what we are saying is mindfulness is now taught, but it is naturally done by many women. If you like your own company, value time alone and find as you grow older that you seem to have grown more introverted, chances are that you have been practicing your own form of meditation. And this is it. Yes, these um, techniques that are being taught, whether whether it's been Western psychology taking technique out of the Buddhist tradition and calling it meditation, um, or whether it's other cultural versions of contemplation and prayer and meditation, whatever whatever is working for you. Um, it's not the ritual. Whatever ritual that is being used, whatever technique is being used, is not important. If we are guided by that from our inner wisdom to lean towards one energetic tradition or another, that is absolutely beautiful. But the tool is not important. Tapping in the space that's already there, that's that's what's needed here that's what's important and we can get to it as i say all roads lead to rome well many 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 roads lead to our wisdom space so don't get hung up on one method over another method um, and approaching the methodology of meditation from uh an, an, an intellectual uh kind of way theoretical intellectual way and and miss out on the whole point of it which is to bring you into that quiet space so maybe heartfulness more accurately describes what crones do and that's absolutely what i've been calling your heartful wisdom your wisdom is arising from well, interestingly, your wisdom is arising. I feel my wisdom arising. It's a very um, embodied experience. I feel it um, arising from both from my heart, but also from my, my sacral womb chakra. So I feel it comes up from there and propels me forward. I know that when I am not connected to my wisdom but stuck in my head because everything is coming head forward it's coming from here and i feel very full in there and and the fact that we can we slip in and out of the two centers of being 
bit head or wisdom level. Um, that's normal. That's part of being in this physical form. We are energetic beings in a physical vehicle. In this, in this existence, in this plane of existence, we are going to slip in and out of that, uh, out of the two. And so it's not that you're broken. It's not that there's problem. It's not that you need fixing, but working with me in our seven week, sorry, no, different thing now, working with me in my 12 week one-to-one -one program. Cause I've just, I've been listening to my own inner wisdom and I have been promoting a group kind of masterclass seven week program. And that is still a possibility, but I just really love having the one-to-one. -one. I really love having the more in-depth conversations and the unique transformative experiences uh, with individual women through my awakened framework, tapping into their sacred crone and stepping into their joy rebooted crone life. So what is actually on offer starting July 8 is my 12 week. So you'll have six fortnightly one hour sessions and then you'll have six weekly Voxer support with me. There's some bonus masterclasses thrown in there as well. And I am really looking forward to taking, I worked out, I think I can have 15, 15 women work with me maximum over the three month period uh, in this, in this format. And I'm super excited. Oh, you also get the first uh, year free with my Cackling Crone collective. So your first year in free for those who take up my VIP one-to-one -one Crone Life Joy Reboot offer. So, so excited by that. I will be running a masterclass in the next fortnight or so, The Art of Appreciation, Crone's don't live in regret. And that's going to give you a little taste of one of the six elements of joyful living, appreciation. And you'll also have an opportunity to join me live in that masterclass in Zoom. Those who join me live in that masterclass, they will be getting uh, a wisdom card reading. They'll also have a special discount offer to join me in that crone life one-to-one -one program with me so i will stream also live into the group but those who turn up live in zoom with me for this master class they'll get the read a reading and they'll also get that special offer uh that look out for that i'm aiming to get this master class up and running to you in the next fortnight super excited um da, 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 da. so back to this inner life was meant to grow in importance as we grow older we explore the world with our senses in earlier years which are directed outward toward what we can see hear touch smell and taste all of which usually becomes less acute as the years pass. This is true for some of us, absolutely. Well, we certainly notice that we need glasses and that, but absolutely. As we grow older, we can draw from what we have already experienced. Usually we have more time for an inner life. Sleeping less than we used to gives us extra hours. Understanding comes when we take time to notice patterns and we can see events in a more detached way. Then when we're in the midst of them, through such insight our store of wisdom grows. When we take time for moments of reflection, we see the importance of character rather than surface appearances and realise that when people do what they do, 
it is more about them than it is about us. It's not just more about them, it's totally about them. We are all living in our separate realities 100% of the time. We are create, our experience is thought created. So it is absolutely 100% of the time when people in our lives, strangers, loved ones, ourselves included, when we are responding to life out there, people, events, we're not responding directly to that person. We are not responding directly to that event. We are responding to the conclusions, the story in our head that we have made about it. And this is really important. This is absolutely important in terms of those discussions of um, <clears throat> trauma and wounds and having to trek through these trauma stories in order to get to the healing absolute bullshit you don't and in fact the worst thing you can do is to put your energy and focus into what you don't want and what crap has happened complaining about what's happened <clears throat> just brings more energy into it and invites more of the same and looking in the past <clears throat> in your the way that the story you told see the thing is your past memories are not absolute like it's not like when you're having a memory about the past that you're in some <clears throat> sci-fi transporter going straight back into the past and even if you did do that when you are experiencing the world you are not experiencing it directly you're experiencing the story in your head about it and we all have our own unique story this is why misunderstandings happen we have an expectation that someone is going to do something and it's often unspoken it's often even not even particularly clearly thought but we just walk around with these expectations that people will do things a certain way because that's the way we do them and and we assume that well i do it that way everyone does it that way well they don't no one is you no one will ever see the world the way you see it and you can't possibly see the world the way other people see it we can try with limited language to describe it but we will never embody another person's experience ever 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 it just can't work like that it doesn't work like that and so if someone is happy with us if they're upset with us they're not upset with us directly they are upset with the story in their head and vice versa this is why it is absolutely not possible in relationships to make another person happy no one is completing another person no one is making them anything that being said we have a universal you know pact to keep you know the universe in harmony it is not a, a carte blanche excuse to be an absolute asshole. Okay. We are responsible for our actions. We are not responsible for how people receive what we do. We can not in control of how they see it. We can't, it just doesn't work like that. However, we are responsible for the, the, the shit we put out in the world. So if you are actively going out in the world and being an absolute asshole and hurting people, well, you are responsible for the consequences of that. You may not be able to control the particular conclusions that the people you've hurt through your actions, your deliberate actions, you can't control the story they told themselves about it, the meaning of it. So you, you might actively do something to someone or, or a group of people. One person may make conclusions about their own worth based on that. Whereas another person will make a conclusion that you're just an asshole. And that, and, and that is the difference. That's what we are not in control of, like as, as a result of what we do. We are in control of the story we tell ourselves as receivers of the world around us. And that is indeed why everything I point to is that it's not about focusing on changing your physical body, changing your physical circumstances, changing the people in it in order to experience your innate joy. 
it's kind of cart before the horse stuff. Be in your joy and whatever shit's going down because, you know, this life stuff happens. Um, but you in your innate state of joy walking through the storm of existence will not get blown off your innate state of joy. Or if you have a little bit of a waver, because it's okay, it's, uh, our emotions are okay, you know, whatever they are. If, if we're angry, if we're sad, if we're scared, if we're whatever, it's just that we've gotten caught in some thinking in that moment and lost sight of our true inner wisdom. But that's also okay because it's part and parcel of being human. Everything's okay. Nothing is a problem. Except that we think it and make it so. Hence why working with me and on my journey to support you. Hey, 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 gorgeous person watching. You're going to have to catch the rest of this in replay where I've been at so far. But please put a comment in. Let me know who's watching so I can yay, hello you personally. Uh, and share some love so that everyone else sees this as well. So what I've been talking about, I have been reading from Jean Shinola Boland's book, Crones Don't Wine. We've been doing our sacred crone story time. I am at the last paragraph of Crones Meditate in Their Own Fashion. I've been chatting about that. I've announced a few amazing offers that are coming up, different ways of working with me. My Cackling Crone Collective is my paid membership that I'm wanting to bring into existence it is there ready to launch and the first 26 women who sign up for the collective get their for their lifetime of their membership of course if they leave the membership and come back it's a different story but the first 26 women will be 17 dollars a month and what i'm doing in this collective is we will continue doing these story times in the collective different different books but but that's what we'll be doing as we are in search on our crone quest. I am going to be having a monthly crone moon circle support circles each month. I am looking forward to different collaborations with other experts, particularly those focused on energetic embodiment. Hey, Zine. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you for joining in. I know it's late with you. Thank you. Um, rewind back to the beginning. This has been a lovely chapter. What this chapter has been about is just to remind us that we don't have to get caught up in the particular techniques of contemplation and meditation, be it yoga, be it uh, various Buddhist meditations, be it other spiritual traditions, um, whatever it is that you're using is beautiful. Uh, but we don't have to get caught up in the mechanics. In fact, when we get up, caught up in the mechanics of meditation, uh, that's when we don't benefit. The truth of the matter is that all, all these forms of meditation, both formal and informal, like standing at your sink and washing up and drifting into that space within that our wisdom arises, this is what it's all about. It's not about getting precious and caught up and almost a bit superstitious about having to do a particular technique at a certain time in a certain way in order to be okay. You're already already okay. Nothing you do is giving you wisdom. The wisdom is already within. It's just that these techniques, whatever you choose, formal or not, the aim is just to bring you back into the space that is already within you that gives you the ability to listen in to your wisdom. And in fact, rather than intellectually thinking that you have to pick a particular kind of spiritual path or tradition in order to fix something that's broken, and I think that's why a lot of people are coming into the, um, the, the healing space and the, the self-help space and all these kinds of traditions and techniques, they come to them because intellectually they're telling themselves a story that they're not okay and that they need to do something in order to be okay. Flip the switch. We already are okay. There is no problem. We already have the wisdom. And if we are tapping into our inner wisdom, divinely guided, you call it a, officially call it a God or or divinely or source or whatever or universe. Again, whatever works for you. But that inner wisdom is innate to all of us. And we are plugged in to 
the universal knowing. And if we approach our life and what we're doing, be it meditation or prayer or other rituals or anything in life, but if we approach from that space, if we allow our intellect to be guided by our wisdom, not the other way around, this is where we get to create a life that is authentic to us, that is innately joyful, even when the outside world is blowing a storm, because it will, because that's physical existence. It will, life out there will blow a storm, but our experience of it does not have to be stormy. And this is how we get to it. So sit with yourself in that quiet space and be guided towards whatever activities you feel called to. For me, I, I have a, a big toolkit of activities that I, I, I love to do for meditation, for my formal, you know, orthodox Buddhist meditation. As a Buddhist, I have the practice that, and vows and things that I do and that I follow, but I also love tapping in, tapping. I love tapping. I love doing a number of different visualizations and, and manifestation and, and uh, meditations, guided meditations. Um, definitely tapping into things when I'm un under the shower or washing up at the sink. It's whatever works, walking, singing, dancing, whatever works for you to help you tap into that space. It's the meditative space that's what you're aiming for. How you get there is totally unimportant. It's, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the method. And this is what, this is what I'm speaking from, um, from my three principles background, but it's also being supported by what Jean is talking about in her book. So experience is the teacher in our early years stored as bits of memory. It becomes an inner resource, a personal collection of intangible memorabilia that we see from a different perspective later in life, especially in moments of reflection, when we find ourselves musing about past events and people in our hearts. When we do this, we see past relationships, ideas, events in the light of a wiser consciousness. From the soul's standpoint, those quiet moments when we are doing nothing or meditating in our own fashion are when creative thoughts and meaningful feelings and intuition arises. And that's that gnosis. And earlier on in, in one of our previous weeks, we talked about that difference, the difference between gnosis being that inner knowing, the universal knowing and logos, the intellect. We are living in a society that has for hundreds of years been pushing us towards being head focused, being logos focused, being logic and uh, empirical measured focused in, in how we go about the world and what is considered important and inverted commas real. And it's not. The, the ego thinking is the illusion. The wisdom is the truth. Now we are physical beings. We, we, we came into existence. Our, our energetic spirit beings were placed in these physical vehicles in a physical world, a material world to have a particular experience. And so we're not saying to disconnect from intellect or disconnect from your body. In fact, the key here is fully, fully embodying but where our wisdom is is the driver of the vehicle not the intellect storytelling is wonderful um language we, we've all it's, it's all it's all a miracle this whole existence is a miracle the ability to speak the ability to think the the many cultures and the many languages and the many stories uh it, it is a miraculous part of our existence so it's not to say to ignore it but to understand it through the lens of wisdom. One very important thing before I go is absolutely so important. When you are contemplating the past, when you are thinking about memories, when you're thinking about past events, you're not replaying it as it, as it was. 
because even when you were in it, it wasn't what it was. It was just the story you were telling yourself. We are in control of the stories we tell ourselves. And the more we focus on uh, allowing for ourselves to see and appreciate the beauty, even in the difficult times, being grateful for the hardships and looking through that lens of wisdom backwards as well as at what is in front of us. This is what is going to enable us to move through the world, tapping into our innate joy, energetically bringing to us more joy, more wisdom, more all good stuff. When we are caught up in complaining about the past, complaining about the current moment, ruminating on all the painful stuff this is why that whole understanding of uh that's out there and people are told it people are told this in the current healing space and the self-help space that you need to focus on you need to focus on the wounds you need to focus on the problems uh and and the past and the trauma and really look at it and identify with it in order to move beyond it and that's absolute bullshit doesn't work like that the more crap you focus on the more crap it is you just stay stuck there the the clarity and the inner peace and the innate joy it's all innate it's all already there and it's just our story in our head that stops us from connecting to what is already there so naturally if you're focusing on problems then you're only going to see more problems if you are focusing on the past in in you know looking at the hurts and this person said this and this happened st sticking with the regrets for the, the decision you've made and staying in that negative space of thinking you're not going to you're just in, a, in you're in a mud you're like quicksand you're just going to stay there you're going to be stuck in there you will not come into your innate wisdom space from that space and it and building more story upon story and analyzing it so when you are working with me we are not going to be staying in that space of problem we're not going to be looking for the problems we're not going to be trekking through them and analyzing them and rehashing them and reframing them and all that when we are experiencing life is a problem and it's just because we are stuck in that thinking at that moment there's problematic thinking all we need is awareness that awareness that we are stuck in our thinking is all that is needed to snap out of it we don't need to analyze the what or the why or the root of it this is how i work and i'm looking forward to working with 15 at the most I can fit in 15 women to work one-on-one -on -one with me coming July in a three-month VIP one-to-one -one offer and I am so excited about it it's 12 weeks six sessions six months six fortnightly one-hour sessions six fortnightly Voxer support bonus master classes uh, one year membership into the collect uh, the the Cackling Crone Collective uh, and, and a very special discount into um, the program Awaken the Joy Within that I will run later in the year but and, and discounts on other services and offers and I'm just so, so excited about finally getting it all clear about what it is that I'm doing with you and for you I prefer working one-to-one -one. I prefer having that more in-depth uh, experience of bringing an individual woman into her crone journey into on her crone quest and supporting her individually than these group masterclasses and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm excited to bring it absolutely excited to bring this so look out for the um the link to that uh for the what i will do is i will put a link above here for um, a free 15 minute discovery call to check in with me and we can check in together and see if you're a good fit 
and I'm a good fit and we're a good fit together for this 12 week one-to-one -one journey together so I'll put the link above here um cackling crone collective is ready to start the first 26 women get to sign up at $17 a month and that will be their lifetime of their membership for them if they if they drop out and come back then they come back at whatever the price is at that point but it will be going up to 97 a month and for that we are going to have so much fun we're going to have our moon circle we're going to have embodiment activities i'm going to bring in experts to do workshops with us um, i'm going to be jumping on live weekly and i will continue the sacred crone story time that you've been enjoying with me now with crones don't whine we've still got a few more weeks to go on crones don't whine but i am going to continue that sacred crone story time activity in the in the membership so if you've been loving this and you want more of this kind of thing you can join us over in the membership okay so see you all later thank you zine before i go zine is there a question that in fact before you before i go zine pop a question in there if you have a question let me know and while i'm talking to you there i'm also going to reach out for my what do i feel like um we're going to do these today i'm going to reach out and do a, a wisdom affirmation um for dropping things everywhere i am going to pull a wisdom card but zine let me know let me know if you've got a question put a question in there if you've got an aha moment comment let me know um because you're still tuning in with me i am going to pull you a wisdom card right now for you specifically and then i'll pull a card for the collective thank you but in the meantime while i'm shuffling let me know if there was anything about what we were talking about that um i am definitely doing a word of wisdom for you absolutely guys so get your get your energetic vibe going send out your question send out your question out there and um, let me shuffle today i am shuffling from yasmin boland's um moonology wisdom cards i absolutely love them um these are great and i've got my eye on, I, i've got my eye on another deck actually i'm i'm um just not from her from um colleen oh god i can't think of her name um and uh it they, they're called um sacred map and it's really cool that they're, they're just really fabulous fabulous looking deck so i think i'm i think i'm gonna get them um, <laughs> but okay thinking of you thinking of you what are we doing what is coming up let's see what does she need what does he need? what is okay all right what have we got for you it's lovely i love this one so there you go for you there's prosperity so there's a new moon in taurus which we actually just had recently prosperity lies ahead yay prosperity lies ahead let us see what is going on with you on this one moon cards by phases let us go new moon in Taurus page 44 give us a moment give us a moment looking for it okay so we often feel that it's somehow wrong to focus on our finances but the truth is that money can make life far more comfortable so true i was just um listening to esther and jerry hicks's um lectures um or audio book on on manifestation and um health wealth and 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 that um and that the truth of the matter is the energetics of money is the same as the energetics of love it's all the same i mean it's just energy 
Uh, the truth is that that money can make life far more comfortable from a physical point of view. The Taurus knows this and the new moon in Taurus is the time to work your magic to create the money you want so that you can have the creature comforts you want. Remember though that someone else is still wishing for what you already have and this is key. So um, as with anything in life, focus it's all energy. We're energy. The universe is energy. Everything is energy. So the key here is not to uh, focus on what you don't have and, and, and be either avoiding what you don't, like uh, avoiding losing stuff or, or getting focused on the lack. It's not about I don't have enough money or I can't afford this or that kind of grungy, fear-based, resentful, all that stuff. That that negative that that energetic space uh, based on our ego, fear-based thinking um, is just going to get in the road of you hearing your inner wisdom, your your inner guided wisdom on what you know how to move forward in life and what aligned actions to take. Um, it also energetically blocks. So the more you focus on what you don't have, the more you focus on what you don't want, the more of that you will get. This is where lovely, this is why vision boards work. This is why, you know, this is how they work. This is the mechanics of a vision board or a dream day journal or any of these sort of activities that are based on really building up you know your your feelings not just the story in your not the story in the head but the feelings of excitement and the feelings of um you know freedom and security and whatever feelings that come up for you when you envision um your ideal the thing you want the life you want and it doesn't and in fact, the bigger the, the dream that you put out there, the bigger the vision that you create for yourself and speak into, that's then what you're doing. You're speaking into existence. Uh, what happens is our ego fear-based thinking gets caught up in and sort of blocks us from imagining big and allowing ourselves to sit in that wisdom, joyful wisdom space because we get caught up in the, Oh, well, that's not possible. I, it's never happened before. How could that happen? We can't see uh, how it could happen. So we, we, we tell ourselves it's not possible. We tell ourselves it's stupid things like it's not realistic and all the rest of it. And then we cause ourselves to have even more thinking that is fear-based and resentful and limiting and all the rest of it. That is the story in our head. It is not reality. The reality is that we are energetic beings plugged into a limitless, abundant, beneficial universe. And all we need to do is show up in the present moment from that wisdom and take what we call aligned action, take action that is, is connected to that inner wisdom, that inner joy and and be open to whatever opportunities arise and keep tapping back into our wisdom. Does this feel right? Is this, does this spark joy? And then from the outer side, yeah, help us, help ourselves because we, we have so caught up in our story in our head that is fear-based and lacking. We do need to help ourselves a, lot, a little bit by um, doing some doing some activities to get us out of that story in our head. It's not that we are creating something that isn't already in existence. It just simply means that we are training our, our being. We're training ourselves to come back into our wisdom and not keep paying attention to that story in our head. So a few consistent activities like creating and, 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 and this is Tanya uses the term Tanya Taylor I love it a bit my beautiful coach she uses the term dream day journal but it's the idea of journaling what you want 
as if it's already happened so you I like doing it the night before like the sort of last thing I do before going to sleep so that I'm allowing my 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 subconscious and that to kick in as well during sleep and 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 help connect me in the day to what I'd written the night before but you write in your journal you write in terms of I am and I have and you allow yourself to go full on with it if you find yourself getting caught up in in limiting it because you or oh, that's unrealistic or you're putting time frames on it and then getting caught up in time frames um, or getting caught up in the how of, of it all stop for a moment move away energetically from doing that activity do some dancing do some singing do something that brings you back into your joy and gets you out of your head the key with all these activities is to be doing them from your your wisdom space for them to to be energetically powerful and help us move move through with um, aligning with the abundance of the universe and the limitless opportunities available to us um and and i love this way of journaling and it is so different to what most of us have grown up understanding most of us have thought you keep a diary to write all your complaints in stop doing that if any of you are still doing that please stop doing it when you are writing your complaints when you are writing the problems of the past and the worries of the future you are actually bringing form you're speaking from uh, you're bringing breathing life um, of the formless thinking into form it's powerful stuff and you don't want to bring crap into form into your life and call that in so please 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 stop writing diaries of complaints or worries there's nothing to worry about we know that when we show up in the wisdom and in the present moment and we are tapped and plugged into the universe we know that at any given moment from one moment to the next we are tapped into our wisdom and therefore will have for us the appropriate answer in that moment so that for you my dear is your lot your way of approaching uh, your prosperity I hope that worked well I'm going to do one more shuffle for the collective of which you are also included so there you go so shop shuffling for the collective for this week and I think we've got a couple of cards that just refuse to go back in so we are going to look at them both what we have is a win oh I love this this is this is a really good buzzing one we've got a win-win a win-win outcome is forecast full moon in Libra and absolutely how to get that win-win it totally makes sense don't let your pride get in the road full moon in Leo yes well that's how you get the win-win the win-win is available to all of us and to you know, all our relationships when we take ego out of the way we are all energetic beings even the person you don't like even the difficult person in your relation in your family or your that could be your kids it could be your parents it could be your spouse it could be a sibling whatever but that person or workmate whoever it is that person that you have considered to be difficult even toxic you know, I'm married to two of them and, and indeed I, I, I looked at their behaviors and, and, and indeed they were abusive they, they, they were I mean there's no there's no denying about that they, they you know <sighs> they were physically abusive they were mentally and emotionally abusive they were financially abusive they, there's no doubt about it they were those things however my experience of them because I was not at the time in those marriages seeing I, I did not know this I didn't see it like this that we are all energetic beings even those really difficult people 
even those murderers in jail, even even the rapist, shock horror, even the pedophile. Yes, absolutely, their behaviours criminal. Their behaviours have caused harm, and we live in a society that requires that people take um, pleasures in. Yes, pleasure. We are we are living in a society that that, that, that does require that we are held to account. So uh, this is uh, absolutely, and that's. That is part of the universal contract of being in this world. If one causes harm, account needs to be taken. So don't get me wrong. There are people out there that have done harmful acts. And that is what I'm saying is not excusing their chosen harmful behavior. But when we understand that we are all energetic beings, we are all at our core pure. We did not come into this world, like Christians would say, original sin and needing to spend their life, you know, mopping up their soul or something. This is not true. We are all pure, vibrant, radiant. We are of the same abundant, radiant, limitless energy of the universe. We have that spark within us. That, that's what we are. Hence why we're all okay. Fundamentally, we're all okay. There's nothing broken. We don't need to fix anything. We don't need to put anything anywhere. We are that already. What we see with the people in the world, the people in our lives that are acting in ways that are harmful, that are problematic, when we understand that it is not because they are fundamentally broken or that they're fundamentally bad um, and therefore needing to be feared, needing to be hated, needing to be punished, needing to be all this other othering stuff that we do. When we lose sight of that, when we lose sight that our connection with people, what we're often doing is we are walking through this world with conditional thinking. So we believe that this person is okay because they are behaving in a certain way. Or we have to I have to behave in a certain way with that person because it's that kind of relationship. They're a spouse. I act differently with my spouse to the way I do with my kid, to the way I do with my parent, to the way I do with uh, my work colleague. And we we shape the way we show up in this world and our expectations and how we interact based on the categories of of, of thinking, the categories that we we put on people and our relationships. And then that is then what dictates how we communicate and how we interact. When we lose sight of the fact that we are all energetic beings and we are all actually the same spark, even if our behaviors are looking different, even if someone is behaving in a way that is harmful, their, their, their inner spirit is still there. And so we can actually experience win-win even in really difficult circumstances when we remove from the equation our, our ego, our, our categorizing, our othering, the judgments, the defensiveness. This notion, and hence why actually in, in, in healthy relationships, this idea of um, compromise, I actually don't agree with. We need to find a compromise. Mm, compromise is still coming from an ego point of view where I'm going to get a little bit of what my story in my head tells me I want and you're going to get a little bit of what you want and and that's that's the win no it's not and we don't have to live like that because often the story in our head is not our inner wisdom it's the story in our head so no one's winning in fact when we're compromising based on ego story the win-win is allowing each individual unique spark of a being in the relationship to show up in their wisdom. And when each of us show up in our wisdom, creating a safety bubble around us by doing so, then another way of, of, of being in relation arises, one that is not based on our limited fear-based, punitive, angry, resentful thinking. So this is really important, not just for the easy relationships, but it's actually particularly important for the ones that we consider troublesome because the ones we consider troublesome
are troublesome because of the story in our head. That's our ego. That's our pride. That's our judgment. That's our expectation. So the more we remove that from how we show up with people, the greater opportunity we have of showing up in our wisdom, seeing them not as a symptom of their behavior, but as a, as a, as a spark as an energetic spark that's just at the moment caught up in some stuck thinking and why I love this methodology and, and why last year I was working on change of heart because ch it, this is how this is how we can actually go about um, preventing you know not just not just creating healthy relationships but preventing conflict in the first place is when we stop and see each other for the spirit beings that we are not the category of person that we have de decided in our head and responding to that and allowing the, the fact that we all get stuck in our thinking and we all act out on that thinking every so often and so if someone is um, responding to their fear-based thinking it's actually quite sort of normal or reasonable um, or understandable at least that when when we are stuck in fear-based thinking that our response to our fear-based thinking is going to be you know difficult behavior non-beneficial behavior rather than hating the person or hating ourselves for that is compassion and forgiveness and speaking to our higher self in each other to invite uh, a wisdom response and step out of the fear-based thinking when we do that it's a win-win so that's your lot for this week next week we are let me grab my book next week we are looking at crones are fierce about what matters to them and what i love about this particular fierceness that we're talking about is what i talk about as being your unapologetic authentic self again it doesn't mean that you're an absolute asshole out there and you know kicking puppies and stuff and and not apologizing i don't mean it like that and i don't mean fierce this is not the fierceness of ego thinking that requires defensiveness and judgment and going into battle um, to defend anything. It is the fierceness that is inbuilt when we show up in our authentic wisdom self. It is this just this energy that is unstoppable because the universe is unstoppable. But well, what's beautiful about it is that it's actually soft. It doesn't require, we don't require to explain. We don't require, because we are in alignment with our inner wisdom, with what we're doing, we don't get caught up in our head about having to defend ourselves or make judgments or put up active, you know, energetic boundaries and all that sort of stuff because we're speaking from our wisdom. And when we, when we do that and we show up, in our authentic unapologetic self well then what happens is there's nothing to apologize for because we are not acting out in fear so we're not causing harm to others in order to set boundaries and do what it is that we want to do we are free to live as we are aligned to do so and we find ourselves able to uh celebrate other people living the way they want to live and not feel the need to negate their, their way of living um or, or judge it or anything we're okay we find ourselves more and more okay in disagreement because it's not telling anything about our wisdom and where we're where we're going it's just reflecting different worldviews and we all have different worldviews because that's just the nature of how life works we have our own realities your reality does not make my reality invalid and vice versa and i love that okay love you all that's next week to look forward to i'll put the links up to the um 15 minute discovery session if you are sparked and called by your inner wisdom to get more information about working with me one-to-one -one, um, and I, with that one-to-one -one offer, I do have a 12-month payment plan on that. So I'm excited to be able to offer that. And unlike other payment plans where they um, it, where it make, it's actually more expensive, it's not. I'm not doing that for this payment plan. 
um, but it, just to check in with me to make sure that you know we're a good fit for working together um, I'm offering a, a, a free 15 minute discovery call so if you're interested in in this program click the link I'll put it above here and book a session with me um, and I'm also going to put the link to the collective as well and all the good stuff that's going to unfold what I've already imagined from my uh, wisdom space and allowed uh, to imagine and it'll just become more and more. I'm, I'm so excited about this idea of cre creating this membership and really putting all my, all my, my, my focus and energy and joy in building a, an experiential journey, a crone journey and calling in other experts to come in and share their uh, expertise with us and um, doing the crone moon circle monthly and whatever arises as we go along uh, and building on it and building on it. So look forward to that. Okay, see you all. Thank you so much, Zine. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in and always being just so wonderful. And um, have a prosperous and happy week ahead. See you all later.